Hey guys, welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you how to create a battery operated flashlight where the battery drains as you're using it and we're also going to be creating pickups to recharge your flashlight. Uh, this video is actually a request, so thank you to Starscream2092 for requesting this. And if you guys would like to see something else specific in Unreal, just comment down below and I'll try my best to deliver a tutorial for you. And this video may also be quite a long one, or longer than usual, as it's got three main parts. Creating the flashlight itself, creating the toggling part, and also creating the pickups and the functionality behind all of these and linking them together. But uh, back to the tutorial, the flashlight is going to be toggled on and off by the F key, however you can change this to whatever you would like, and the battery will be drained through this, which will also be displayed on the HUD, which we can do in a future video if you would like to see that. And you can pick up little batteries to refill the power in your flashlight, and if you run completely out of power, then you can't turn the flashlight back on, and if it was on, it will turn itself off. Uh, so let's get to it. What you're going to want to do first is set up the light source itself, and this is done in the character blueprint, so mine would be in the first person character blueprint which you go into first person BP and then load blueprints and then first person character or just wherever yours is. And what you want to do once you've opened this up is go to the viewport, add component which is the big green button up in the top left, search for a spotlight and put that in there. And this spotlight we created inside the viewport here and the reason we're using a spotlight and not any other light like a point light or anything is because the spotlight goes out in this cone shape that you can see here like a flashlight would. When you have a flashlight, the light doesn't just appear in a ball around you, it, like a lantern might do, it goes out in front of you, like what you can see on the screen now. So what we're gonna to wanna to do now is reposition the spotlight so it's just in front of the character's face here, or the camera if you're in first person like this, like so. But with a third person, you'll actually have a face that you can look at. that'd be good enough. This is because in games the light comes from where you can see, so the camera, not below it, like where your hand would be. And we want it in front of the camera or the face and not in it or too close and this is because this will cause clipping when you move uh, if it is too close or in the face. So the character animation might go forward into the light and therefore cause a shadow that you wouldn't see when using a flashlight like in real life or anything. And I'm also going to attach the spotlight onto the camera right here and yours might be called f uh, follow camera not first person camera just depending on what it is and what template you're in. For example, third person template would be follow camera. And you just simply do this by dragging it on top of the, in the components panel on the left up here. And we're doing this so that the light moves with the camera and therefore your mouse as well. And we want the flashlight to be pointing in the direction you're looking, not just directly in front of you. So if you're facing forwards but looking to the right, we want the light to point to the right too, not straight ahead. As well as it also now being able to go up and down as you look up and down as well. We're also just going to adjust the intensity over here to the right in the details panel. Now for some reason this number needs to be incredibly high for the player to be able to properly notice it. So I'm going to set it to 15,000. But I'd say anything between 15 and 20,000 is a good start. Now obviously you can experiment with this yourself and find the right intensity that works for you in your scene, as your scene may be darker or brighter than mine is. As right now I'm using the first person template. So you can also change some more details over here to the right, such as the shape and the size of the light and how far it reaches as well as the color of it. So for example, the color here, you can change it to a nice red, blue, whatever. And leave it as white though. You can change the angle of the inner cone, outer cone, like that, change the length, how far it goes, radius, all of this, but again, I'm just going to leave it as it was, do that to set it to default. So if you hit compile, go back to here and press play to test it, go to something you can see that there is the light there. Mine's a little dim because the scene around me is so bright, so I'm just going to up this to, let's say, 20,000, just to show it properly in the tutorial here, so we can see it clearer. Go up something, that's much better, there we go. But once you're happy with it, we'll just go back into the details panel on the first person character, or your character blueprint, go down to rendering down here, and uncheck the visible. And this means that by default we won't see it, so the flashlight will be turned off. So let's just hit compile again. And I think that'll be it for the basic flashlight, uh, but now we just need to make it so you can toggle it on and off, and also battery operated, and we'll make the pickups later. So first off, what we're gonna wanna do is set up the key binding for the toggle mechanic. So how you do that is you go to edit, project settings, wait for it to load, go down to input, action mappings, and create a new one. I'm just gonna call it flashlight. Again, you can call it whatever you want, but simple enough. I'm going to have it as the F key. 
And again, you choose what you want it to have it as, but F is the most common one. But you can have it as right click, E, whatever you want. And again, the good part about doing it this way is you can have multiple buttons for different consoles or if you just want multiple buttons for it. And the reason I've got a sprint here is because of my last tutorial where I made a sprinting and stamina mechanic. So I recommend you watch that as well. But just in case you haven't got that, don't worry, it's not a default one that you're supposed to have. So then you want to go back into your character blueprint, go into the event graph now instead of the viewport and find some empty space. So now we're going to set it up. So we want to right click, type in flashlight, or whatever you just called the action mapping as we're now referencing that. Now if you want this to be a toggle not a hold we're only going to be using the press button so when the player presses F it turns on and when they press it again it turns off. So what you're going to do is go off the pressed, get a branch and this is just to quickly check if the flashlight is already on or off. And so to do this we need to create a new variable down here in the bottom left under variables create new or the plus button sorry and then call it is flashlight on or whatever you want to call it flashlight on, flashlight question mark, anything like that. But this is the most straightforward one for me. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure that this is a Boolean up here, so it can be a yes, no, true or false value. Then we're gonna drag it in, get, and then plug this into the condition on this branch here. Then we're gonna reference the spotlight that we just got. So you drag that in from the components panel up here in the top left, drag it in like so. Then off this, you're gonna to wanna to drag out and do set visibility. And we're gonna to wanna to set the visibility to false, so leave it unchecked like that. And we're gonna to wanna to plug this into the true part of the branch up here, so that once it's pressed, if the flashlight's on, it will set the visibility to off. So it turns the flashlight off. Then after this, we're gonna to want to set this flashlight on to false. So drag it in from down here, set, plug that in and check it as false, so leave it as unchecked like so. So what this means is that if the player presses the F key and the flashlight is on, then it will turn it off by setting the visibility of it to false and also set the boolean down here to false, meaning that this all knows that the flashlight is turned off. Then we're gonna to wanna to do the exact same thing but with the false part here. So we're gonna to wanna to select these and just copy and paste them down here. Also maybe just move them a bit, give yourself some more space like that, and hook this in to false, leave that like that, but instead of leaving these as false, we're going to tick them so that the visibility is on and the flashlight is then set to on here as well. And so what this means is that when the F key is pressed, if the flashlight isn't on, it's going to come down here, turn it on, and then set the boolean is flashlight on to true. And the reason it's important to set the boolean at the end here is because if we don't, when it gets to the branch here, if we didn't change its flashlight on, it would constantly do the same part of the branch. So if we left it as false, for example, it would constantly be trying to turn it on, but you'd never be able to turn it off again because you'd just be coming up, is flashlight on? No, turn on, but then we didn't set it to on, so do it again. So let's hit compile and let's test this. Uh, play, come over here. As you can see, it's turned off. Press F, turn it on, F, off again. I can now toggle on and off the flashlight, so that works perfectly. So now that's the main part of the flashlight done, so now we're gonna to wanna to set up the battery. So we're gonna to want to go back into the first person character, or whatever it is, and set up a new variable. I'm gonna call this one battery, or you can call it flashlight battery, whatever you want. Again, it, this doesn't really matter too much. And we're gonna to want to make sure that this is an integer, so it's a numerical value. Now let's compile it so we can change the default. I'm going to set the default value to 100 so that the player starts with some battery. Although you can set it to whatever you want, so it can be 50 or 10 so the player has some battery but not a lot, or you can set it to zero so, that, so they start off with no battery. It's completely up to you. Now we're going to make it so the battery decreases if the flashlight is on, which we can do by using the variable we made earlier is flashlight on. So now we're going to use the event tick node so that it checks constantly so it's more precise on draining the power. So it will drain if the flashlight is on and it won't drain if the flashlight isn't on. And the reason the event tick makes this work is that it doesn't have to wait long for it to update as it checks every tick or every frame. Now as I've already used the event tick node in my sprinting and stamina video, what I'm going to do is drag off it again and get a sequence node. So to find it, if you haven't used it, just do event tick or if you have, do that. You're going to want to give yourself a bit more space and I've already put the sequence in because uh, I knew I'd be doing this but yours might be more like this so all you're going to do is just drag off here get the sequence node, do that keep this in here like that and then just drag off then one 
down here and get a branch. And the branch is to check if see if the flashlight is on. So as the condition we'll get a reference to is flashlight on. And if it is true, so the flashlight is on, we're gonna add a delay. And we're gonna set mine to 0.2 as the default there. Now I shall set it to 0.1. So this means that every 0.1 second the flashlight is on, the battery will decrease. And now you can change this to be quicker or slower. It doesn't really matter, but I'm gonna leave it as 0.1 for now, just for the purpose of the tutorial, so it goes down quickly. But I'd recommend having it higher than this so the battery will last longer. Then after the delay, we want to set battery and after the value here what we want to do is an integer minus integer and the top value we're going to hook up with the battery here and the bottom you can leave as one and again you can change this value as well to be whatever you want so this change this changes how much it's decreased by and this changes how often it decreases that so just customize these two numbers to get the perfect timings for you again this is how often this is how much. So now we're going to check to see if you have enough power to keep the flashlight on. So if your battery drops to zero, then the flashlight will turn off. So now let's give us a bit more space, moving this out here. Now for this branch, we're going to go off of true, create another branch, and have the condition as an integer is greater than an integer. Have the top value as the battery, and the bottom value keep as zero. So this basically means that if the flashlight's on, and the battery level is above zero, then remove battery level there. So now we're gonna go off false here, reference the spotlight here, and then just so just drag it in from the top, and then toggle visibility. Make sure to plug that in there, do all this. And off of here, we're also gonna to wanna to make sure to set is flashlight on to unchecked, so that basically if the flashlight's on and you don't have enough power, then it's gonna turn it off and set is flashlight to false which is especially important when we want to turn it back on again later on. And so to make the testing easier for us, we're going to come off of this set battery here, do a print string, and then plug in the battery. Which So this will basically put the battery as an integer on the top left, so we don't have to just wait. We can see what the actual value is and see if it is decreasing or not. So let's compile, play, come over here, turn on the light. See, I can toggle it on and off, and when it's on, that's decreasing. So let's just wait and see to see if when I get to zero, will it stop? Um, will it stop going down and will the flashlight turn off? Yes, it does, that works perfectly fine. And I'm pressing F, but I can't turn the flashlight back on. So that works perfectly. So now what we're gonna to wanna to do is to create the battery pickup to recharge your flashlight. And for this, I've quickly created a little 3D battery in Blender, which I'll link down there to in the description, which is completely free for you to use wherever you want. We're gonna to wanna to go back to our blueprints folder, so close this down blueprints here and create a new blueprint actor. So to do this we're going to right click to blueprint class actor. I'm just going to call mine battery pickup. Although you can, again you can call yours whatever you like. It doesn't really matter too much. Then we're going to load it up and first we can go to the top left add component static mesh. You can call this whatever you want. I'm just going to call it battery but you can leave a static mesh if you want. And then what we're going to do is import the battery that I've made on Blender. So we're just going to close this, go to the Blueprints folder. I'm just going to go Content, New Folder, Static, Meshes, just keep it organized. So what you're going to want to do is just drag and drop it in, leave all these like this, Import All, close that, there you go. And then select the Static Mesh down here, Go back into the, this, the pickup we just made, and then under static mesh here, click this little arrow, and that will then use it. And then you can scale this up however you want, because this is incredibly small, as I made it to scale in Blender. And to do that, you just change the scale here, so I'll make it like five times as big. No, I'll change it ten times as big. Now it might look quite big now, but they'll be about probably life size. Not life, it'll probably be about the size of a person. You can also just use a cube or a sphere if you want, or your own models. The look of it doesn't matter too much. We just need to set up the functionality behind it afterwards. Now what we're going to do is go back up here to the top left, add component, add in a box collision, enter, and then that should be good. Perfect size there. And so what this means is that whenever the player walks into the battery, it will essentially pick it up and add power to the flashlight. And with this collision, we're going to want to make sure it fits around the battery perfectly like this. 
uh, so it's the right shape and size. So if yours isn't like this, then obviously you need to change that. And if you're using my battery, then you can just copy the size to scale the battery up 10 times, and then the box collision was just a scale of one. But if you have your own model or have changed its size differently to mine, then you'll need to play around with it yourself to get the perfect size and scale. So let's hit compile, go over to the event graph now to start work on the functionality of this. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is get a bit of space and reference the box collision here by just dragging and dropping it in like that and then make a new event on component begin overlap like that and then just drag this back down here and so that means that when the player walks over this box collision it will fire up this line of code they're about to create so off of this execute pin here we're going to cast your character so mine is first person character but yours might be third person or just the name of what you've called it and this is so that it only changes that character's battery level and it's also where the variables we need to communicate with is stored. So then as first person character, we're going to want to set battery level and we need to remember to hook it all up so it actually does do it all and it works. And in this value here, we're going to do an integer plus integer and hook up the battery for the top value. So again, as first person character, get battery, plug that into there. And as the bottom, I'm going to set it to 10 so that the battery gives you 10 more power. But again, you can set this to whatever you want, whether it be 1, 5, 10, 50, it doesn't matter too much. This just, this determines how much power each battery provides. Now we're also gonna to want to cap the battery level at 100 so the player can't just keep supercharging their battery. And to do this, we're gonna to want to come off of set battery here and get a branch to check what the battery level is to see if it is less than 100. Then as the condition, we're gonna to want to get an integer is greater than or equal to another integer. I'm gonna to want to hook up the battery in the top, like so, you can just use that one that we've already got, and then put 100 in the bottom, or whatever you want the max to be. Well, if you do want to keep increasing it as if you're just picking up batteries and storing them and then using them when you want, that's also fine, you just ignore this step. So just don't do this bit here. So then after the branch, we're gonna to want to set the play battery to 100, so you, just grab off as first person character, set battery, set it to 100, make sure that you connect all this up properly, like so. And you want to get it off as first person character because that's where the variable is stored. So if you just try to do it differently, it won't work. And this is so that if the battery is 100 or more, then it, it will just remain at 100. So it will still pick up the battery, but again, if you don't want this to happen, just ignore this step. Then we're going to want to destroy the actor once the player has used it or picked it up. So to do that, we're simply just going to go off false here and do destroy actor, like so, and keep the target as self. And then you also just want to make sure that you hook it up after that as well, after the set battery, so that whatever it does, it will destroy the actor after you pick it up. So we're going to hit compile, and ah uh, yeah, we didn't reference player character here, so you want to go off object, get player character, just plug that in there like so, hit compile, so let's see if this actually works. So what you're going to do is go back to your content, go to your blueprints folder where you made the uh, battery pickup, and then just put some of these in, doesn't matter how many or where, just make sure you've got some. Press play, turn the flashlight on to drain the power a bit, and pick some up, you see the power went up, so it's 66 now. Now it's 70. So there we go. That's working perfectly. So that'll be it for this video. I think I've got everything I wanted it to do and everything that Starscream requested for, which is to have a flashlight that you can toggle on and off like so, have the battery drain like it is there, and also be able to have pickups to recharge a flashlight, which we've just used. So I hope this video helped. And remember, if you have any questions or requests, just comment them down below and I'll do my best to help. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one.